finding possible rational zeros of polynomial functions. Okay, so the rational zero theorem, we're given some polynomial. This is the long expanded out version. Um, but remember, this is gonna have integer coefficients and then every rational zero, anything we can set up as a fraction is going to be where P is factors of the constant. So we wanna compare factors of the constant term and Q is gonna be factors of the leading coefficient. So if everything's written in descending order, it's gonna be the very last number and the very first number, the two that we really concern ourselves about. Um, so next up, um, let's take a look at an example where we list out all the possible rational zeros. We're not gonna actually test them on this one. You don't always have to test them. Sometimes the questions are simply asking, what are the possibilities? So looking at this polynomial, the two numbers we care about are the constant. So I'm just gonna list this out as four. We're gonna look at a positive and negative case for every single one of these. Um, so I'm not too concerned that this is a negative out in front of the four right now. Okay, next up, our leading coefficient, so a two. So I tend to list these out just off to the side here, so I'm trying to list out all my possible rational zeros. All right, then I'm gonna list out all the different ways we can factor four using integers. So it could be one times four or two times two, but I'm only gonna list it one time. And technically, of course, it could be uh, negative two times positive two to make a negative four, but don't worry about the positive and negative for right now. Next up, the ways to factor two are just one multiplied by two, thinking prime number here. Next, let's set these up as um, rational zeros, as fractions. So the order matters on this, then I'm gonna take one over one. I'm gonna go two over one, four over one. And we'll simplify these in just a second. Next, we can go one over two. We could say two over two, or we could say four over two. So let's think about reducing these down and simplifying. One over one is one, two over one is two, and four over one is four. One over two doesn't reduce down, so we'll leave it as one half but two over two is equivalent to one. Well, we already have one in our list, so we're not gonna list this a second time. Similarly, when we have four over two, that's the same thing as two if we reduce down. Two is already in our list, so we're not gonna list it a second time. The other thing we wanna be careful of is it could be both positive and negative for each one of these cases. One way to illustrate that is to put plus and minus out in out in front of a set notation squiggly brackets. Um, usually when you're doing like online homework, you're gonna list out both a positive one and a negative one, a positive two and a negative two, positive four and a negative four, positive one half, negative one half, um, in a comma separated list to identify all of your solutions or possible rational zeros, maybe is the best way to put this. Um, so hope this helps out. I'm listing out all the possible rational zeros in a video coming right up. We're gonna actually list these out and then test which ones work and which ones don't. All right, hope this helps. Good luck.